we have our wheel set, our new Industry 9 wheel set laid out and ready to go. I have the parts necessary, the tires on the wheels, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna install the the 12 speed cassette on the rear wheel as well. Um, so it's always good to have either a, like a five gallon bucket or some of these milk crates. Um, you can rest the, the wheels on by the spokes and then the hub kind of protrudes down into the bottom and it's an easy way to just kind of work with uh, wheels and tires. Uh, you're gonna need some stands. So I have these, I keep these little two uh, bottles and I carry those around with me and, and just refill them with the, with the larger one. It's just an easier way to manage it. We have our SRAM 12-speed cassette that we will install. And um, I mean, just look at the size of that 50T. And to do that, you're gonna need a cassette tool. So this is the cassette tool and it slips in and you tighten it. Might need a tire lover to help put the tire on the wheels. Um, it just depends. Some tires are, uh, the beads are tight. Some rims, the, you know, the tolerances are different. So um, depending on how much the tire stretch and the bead on the tire stretch, it may be very easy to take it off. And I've had some that were a pain in the butt to uh, both put on and take off. So the other thing you'll need is, uh, we may need to grease the, uh, the cassette. Um, it does come pre-greased. All right, so this is the Industry 9 wheel set. I'm gonna leave the, the end caps on just for now. I'm just going to give it a, a wipe down just to make sure there's nothing. These are already uh, pre-taped, right? And so they're, they're set up for tubeless already. And that's what we'll be doing to run these tubeless, hence the, st the stand sealant. And so give both of these a wipe down just to make sure there's no debris and kind of check where the valve stems are. Make sure they're nice and clean. And I rest those both on my bucket. I'll put the uh, tires on first before I put the cassette on because it's easier to just kind of put the tire on, stand the wheel up, and then insert, uh, install the cassette into the proper torque specifications. And you've got the, the tire so you can put some pressure down on the wheel. So we'll do that first. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the front wheel first. It's important to get the right orientation. A lot of tires are directional, meaning uh, you need to install them the, the right direction. Uh, so this is my disc rotor side. I can see if I pull this end cap off, I can see my six bolt, um, six bolt interface there. So this is the disc side. And um, when you're looking at the bike, this side is on the non-drive side, right? And so um, if we were facing this way, uh, the disc would be here in the front uh, disc and the direction of this wheel would be turning like such. You want to get your, since this is the front, so this is the minion, I'm running the Maxxis minion DHF with a 2.3 width. It's the triple compound XO uh, tire. It works pretty good for me. It does have a bit of rolling resistance. I've said that in some other videos, but uh, definitely gets a lot of grip. And so I will be mating this to this front wheel and it is a directional tire if you look on the tire and it's usually on the side that has the least amount of markings on it this one uh, there's an arrow right here that says rotation and that arrow you can see it there points in the direction of the rotation so this wheel should be installed or this tire should be installed Rotating this way. All right, I'm just gonna sit the tire, the wheel inside the tire and get the first bead started first. And then I'll actually line up the logo on the tire with the logos on the wheel. So what I'm trying to do is get Maxxis lined up with the wheel logo here. And so I think that's it. And then I'll just kind of start the tire with both hands and use my knees and just go around. 
and then I'll pick it up. And the way I like to put sealant in is I leave a gap at the bottom here. So you can see this gap and I pour it in the side of the tire versus actually um, putting it through, removing the core and putting it through the core. I like it this way because the, uh, for some reason in these particular wheels on the on the other set I have, the the latex, the stand sealant gets gunked up in there when I pour it through um, over time. And I found if I pour it in the side, it actually is a better, works better for this particular setup for me at this point in time. And so we have our uh, stand sealant latex that will just pour down the side there. So we'll remove our cap. The one thing you want to do is make sure, and I already shook this up previously, is make sure you shake this stuff up really well. And I'll remove the top cap and we'll just pour it down the tire, squeeze it. So it all comes out. This is for one wheel. Make sure we get it all out. And I save these little bottles because they can work fantastic for the road. And so what we now have is have all the sealant at the bottom of the wheel. And so I just turn it until the gap is at the top now. So I've got the gap at the top. And I just finish pulling it on with my fingers. And so now we have a wheel that's ready to be um, aired up and get the bead seated on it. And so I'll remove the, the valve top and the uh, unscrew the uh, Presta top. What we're looking for is the bead sound, the sound of the bead popping. So usually I'll go up to about 20 pounds and I'll let it normalize. And I'll check the uh, about right on there and I'll check to make sure there's no protrusion of the bead anywhere. Then I'll usually go up at about 40 pounds you'll hear uh, the final bead seat. So let's see. Like tip there. And then I'll tighten up the valve, put our top cap back on. And then I'll do a couple things. I like to bounce it, get all of the stands situated. Then I like to shake it back and forth, turn it over, shake it back and forth, and then we'll put it in our stand on one side and let it sit for a minute and then we'll flip it. And then we can move on to our next wheel. And this is the DHR2 on the back. All right, so this is our directional arrow here on drive side so we know our wheel goes inside the tire like this so we have our knobs pointing toward the front and so we'll just go through the same exercise of sitting the wheel down inside and get the first D on so there we go so we have the the wheel logo it starts here ends here and then we have this centered in the middle there so we'll turn this around and again put our second bead on put your feet up under it and we're just going to work our hands around and then lift up and use your top of your thighs to hold so it's, it's like having a bunch of different tire lever, levers at your disposal there and we'll leave a little gap at the bottom to pour our stands in Double check positioning and yeah, so now let's pour our stands in, give it a good shake. A nice squirt. Save this bottle too. And then easily, softly rotate it toward the top, and then pour 
your second bead on it. So there's your second tire. And then we'll fill this baby up. And we'll fill this tire up. That's your about 20. So there's the first lead pop. That's about 20 pounds. Now just let it equalize a little bit there. You're not better for it. So that keeps it from those loud pops as well. You'll get a more gradual kind of seed of the bead. while you're bouncing. Same on the other side. And we'll put her down in our basket there. And flip this one now. Come back a minute later flip that one okay now that we have the tire seated on the wheel i'm going to remove these plastic in uh, caps that came with the wheel that shipped this is the rear tire and we're going to put on the the SRAM cassette on the SRAM xd driver here so i'm going to carefully remove these end caps and make sure I'm going to save these this time. Be careful not to pull the axle cap off. What, what can happen is that. So you see you separate your end cap and it gets stuck in this plastic piece and you don't want that to happen. So make sure you don't do that. All right. And so we will install the uh, SRAM cassette on the XD driver here. This thing has plenty of grease on the inside of it. Um, you can see that gray grease, it comes pre-greased. Um, so I'm gonna, there's threads inside of the cassette. There's threads on the actual XD driver. And so, and there's some slots. And so basically you just fit the cassette over the driver until it gets a good seat. Then we will use, and our torque spec is 40 Newton meters. So I'm gonna use, I use this part tool um, torque wrench. That will get it started. And then once you feel it tighten up, put your, your socket on. And so we'll give this a whirl. use the cassette to go work in your favor here and work it backwards and Newton meters is on the bottom indicator down here so I'm gonna go till I get to 40 and that's it right there all right so that and you just want to kind of check for any kind of play all right so that's just the axle end cap moving right now but set itself is locked on and we have a working back wheel that we get, can actually put on the bike now. Okay, here's our front wheel. I'm gonna remove these plastic shipping end caps. Again, being careful to not throw away anything that's important. As you can see, see how the, it came off with the plastic and if you're not careful, you'll throw that thing away and this, is important. It's your axle end cap and it gives you your spacer too. So put that back in. Put her back in and we'll save these later. And I'll remove this side. And again, see? 
it came off again. So be very careful with these. 